So uh, one of the focuses for EQC in 2015 is making sure we capture uh, the lessons learned from the Christchurch earthquakes. Um, and I've just picked up a very important personal lesson, which is never to follow uh, a passionate, such a passionate speaker as, uh, as, um, as uh, excuse me, <laughs> no, as uh, Minister Wagner and as thoughtful as John Ombler, because as I've just demonstrated by comparison, I'm bound to look dull and rumbling in, in the comparison. Um, and John, I really like your structure around the phases um, of recovery. Um, I'm also wanting to talk about phases. I'm not sure exactly how we mesh together, but that's going to be quite, uh, quite interesting for me. Um, you know, you've all heard of the 80-20 rule. So, uh, you know, in most, and it's probably not very accurate, but in most endeavours in life, 20% uh, of what you're trying to do takes 80% of the effort. Um, at EQC, we're currently desperately trying to get to grips with the 95-5 rule. So of the 169,000 families, 169,000 homes that we were trying to work with at the start of the earthquakes were 95% of the way through that journey. So 95% of those families are completely through the process with EQC. So that means we fixed just under 66,000 homes through the Canterbury Home Repair Program. Uh, we've got over 90,000 families through the various sort of cash settlement processes that we've had in place. And I'm really proud that the team at EQC has been able to get to that far at this stage in the recovery. Um, you know, to minimise the risk of, of, of lynching, I'm not going to try and persuade you it's been a fast process. Um, but, you know, when we look overseas, I'm st I still can't find anywhere where the domestic recovery has moved this quickly. And in many cases, they take quite a lot longer. So I'm really proud of what the organisation um, has delivered. Uh, but equally, you know, that 5% uh, of, of the families that are left is where our absolute focus sits uh, at the moment and for the rest of 2015. Um, and one of the things I love about this conference is it really is forward-looking. But I'm going to ask you to indulge with me for one second as I just do a little bit of a recap of the story so far from an EQC perspective, just to put that 5% into context. When we start to talk about you know, some of the issues that those families are facing and how, what we need to help them through, just to put that, that sort of into the context of where we've come from so far. So John talked about the first stage being, um, was it the emergency response to the earthquakes? From an EQC perspective, that was just understanding what had happened. So um, I, I, I think we completed in full 400,000 assessments of properties across Christchurch. So 180,000 homes in Christchurch, I'm sorry, in Canterbury, lodged some form of a claim with us. And due to multiple earthquakes, we assessed them multiple times. So something like 400,000 assessments. So we could try and understand where was the damage, where was the worst damaged, who did we need to help first. Um, emergency repairs. So you know, we, in the early days, through to sort of the latter half of 2012, completed 50,000 physical emergency repairs in homes across Christchurch to keep them safe, sanitary, and secure. We paid for another 50,000 repairs on top of that. So right through from you know, the earthquakes, right through to the second half of 2012, our main job was absolutely focused on that emergency response stage and just trying to understand the scale of what we were trying to, uh, to take on. Then we get into the rebuild um, phase, our repair phase. And I'm not sure if that's restoration or reconstruction. It's probably a blend of both in terms of the model that John presented to you. So that's where we get in there and we actually try and put the homes back into the position they were uh, before the earthquakes. And I'm just going to stress that point, back to where they were before the earthquakes, as I want to touch on that a little bit later on when we think about the quality of housing stock across, um, across New Zealand. So that's when we, we kick the program off. Um, our legislative model for responding to earthquakes, which is cash settlement, clearly was not going to be appropriate for an event of this scale uh, given a relatively small economy that we have in New Zealand. And so within six weeks, we created the Canterbury Home Repair Program, and that's delivered re really well for us in terms of ensuring everyone in Christchurch had access to a good quality repair, irrespective of what they were prepared to pay or, or the, uh, the amount of damage that they'd suffered. So set that program up, and that's done a fantastic job for us. Again, 95% of the way through, 66,000 homes fixed, almost, um, with really strong control over inflation and making sure we had full access to, to those repairs. Um, you know, we've, we often get accused still of having focused on the easier repairs first. Uh, that's not the case. 
You know, the program was set up to address a wide range of repairs right from the start. But just by their very nature, the more complex repairs take longer. You know, if you need to get access to an engineer to help with the structural design of the repair, that's going to take longer than a simpler repair. If the repair is compounded by the impact of land damage, that's going to take longer in terms of the repair. So not by design, but just organically, this sort of pool of 5% of homes that we've got left to, to fix, just organically are the most complex repairs. So disproportionate representative in this final 5% are the more complex uh, jobs that we have to do. Um, which also means that those complex jobs are also the ones that have the most potential for variation in the final cost. So if we're looking, waiting for engineer's report, if we need a builder to quote on quite a complex repair, that's when we might get the most variation in the outcome of what it's going to cost. And that drives us to something which um, you know, is, is a, possibly one of the worst outcomes for our customers, which is to be with us for four years and then to go over cap. And we know that this has been happening. It happened a bit last year. Um, there are a few more going through this year. That's the worst possible outcome. That's what we're absolutely trying to avoid. However, it is inevitable to some degree. So the work we've got underway now, as part of the work we've got underway now with this 5% this of homes, is getting every file, looking at every single case, and just trying to understand any risk of those claims going over, over cap when we finally come to repair them. And working very transparently with the insurance industry to make sure we're joined up on that. And we, if we do have to make a transfer to the insurer, it's as seamless um, as it possibly can be. Um, the one note I've got here, and I, I'm, I'm, I've become slightly low to make promises, but um, um, 2014 also marked a significant milestone for people in, in San Francisco, in that it was the date of the final claim settlement from the 1989 earthquake in San Francisco. So I am prepared to make a promise that while we've got a lot of work to do with the final 5%, we're not going to take that long. We are going to focus this year and try and make sure that we get, uh, we get that resolved. We're into the next phase now. And again, I'm not quite sure this fits into John's model, but a review of what's been done so far. So far more organizations now coming through to look at the review of what's happened. Uh, we've had the Office of the Auditor General, we've had uh, the Human Rights Commission, and others coming to look at re the review of the process so far. Particularly at the moment, reviews of the quality of the work that's been done, you know, which is really fundamentally important. We absolutely endorse the work that's being done by MB and others to understand the, the quality of workmanship for the work that's been done um, in Christchurch. Um, it raises a few issues that we've been trying to deal with all the way through. Um, and so the first one is, and this is not, um, this is going to sound like an excuse, so again, let me apologise in advance, it's not an excuse, but Brands did some research a wee while back that talked to people about how they felt about the, the, the state of their homes, the quality of, the, of, of their homes. And that research said that most of us, um, A, overstate the quality of repair of our homes, and B, tend to use the interior quality as a guide to the overall quality of your house in terms of the external quality. I've got my signal. Uh, or maybe it starts telling me I'm getting to dangerous territory and I should shut up, I'm not sure which. Um, and, and so what we're finding is we're work, we, what, all the way through is working with customers where we have a different view of what damage was there before the earthquake versus what was caused uh, by the earthquake. Um, there are cases at the moment which will help us guide us through this. So in terms of floor levels and damage to floor levels and quality of foundation, some really fundamentally important issues that we need to, need to assess in terms of what was there beforehand, what are we legally able to spend the natural disaster fund on in terms of, in terms of settling those claims. So that's a big part of the work do, we're doing now. That's a big part of the 5%. The people who are in this last final 5%, if it isn't a technically difficult repair, it's because they have a very different view of what damage the earthquake caused to where we are. And again, the way to solve that is to talk to every single person, go through every single file, and try and get to some sort of common understanding and agreement. And again, that's what we're doing now, and that's what takes, uh, takes the time. The other part of quality of repair is the quality of the work that has been done through the Canterbury Home Repair Programme. Um, and again, I should say from the start, I'm really proud of the work that local tradies have done in this huge event. So huge amounts of work, uh, largely done really well. So again, 85% satisfaction from customers with that work since the start of the earthquakes, which compares just as well to anywhere else in the country, despite the huge pressures on that workforce. However, we all know that tradies aren't perfect. We all know that sometimes they're going to get it wrong, and we will stand there to come back and restore any work that's not been done uh, to the appropriate standards. Um, our focus is this year, uh, main focus is, again, that final 5%, completing, um, 
getting up to speed with those complex land claims that we've got to resolve, winding down the organisation and lessons learned. So we've started with the complex land settlements, the increased flood liquid uh, vulnerability packs are through the door now, going out now, followed by conversations with homeowners about whether they understand it, whether they understand how we calculated the payments. We're winding that up and then we'll start to wind up the increased liquefaction vulnerability payments through the course of this year. Um, I'm just going to jump ahead a wee bit because I'm being stared at. Lessons learned, again, that is a really key point for us this year. So capturing everything we've learned from our experiences in Canterbury and more importantly, your experiences in Canterbury. First thing I'd say is we are applying those here and now. So we had the Ekaterhuna and Cook Strait earthquakes over the past couple of years. Um, the Cook Strait earthquakes were the largest events in EQC's history apart from the Canterbury earthquakes. And you'll find you're not reading as much about us from Joanna's uh, counterpart at the Dominion as you have been reading locally because we've put those lessons into effect and we're able to give customers far more certainty from the start. We're taking those lessons and working across the country with local authorities to make sure the rest of New Zealand learns from what happened in Canterbury and is better prepared for the next one in terms of its horizontal infrastructure and its housing stock in terms of where we're building. Lessons for Canterbury, um, we had Mike Jacker there from TNT literally on his bike after the earthquakes, cycling around, helping us map liquefaction across Canterbury. So 100, th 100 uh, square kilometres of ground liquefaction mapped, 500 square kilometres of land in Canterbury uh, mapped from the air, 20,000 um, subsurface drilling investigations and 400 boreholes mean that we know far more about the condition of the ground in Canterbury than anywhere else in New Zealand. And that's an important part of the rebuild that John talked about in terms of making sure that's the most resilient rebuild we have in New Zealand. And when the next one does hit, and I hope for your sake and mine, it's not for a very long time, but when the next one does hit, that Canterbury can, will respond far better to the next earthquakes than it did um, to these ones. Um, and I'll end on that note, skipping ahead, just to say, uh, you know, we're not the EQC we were back in 2010. Uh, we won't be going back to the EQC that we were in 2010. We're in far better shape now, and we owe it to New Zealand to make sure that we build the new EQC that New Zealand deserves based on these lessons for the next earthquake. Mm -hmm.